<clears throat> really? Really? So as you all know, Anthem's VIP demo launched this week, and uh, it was uh, <laughs> it was a rough launch. For starters, none of us could log in. I rushed home from work, couldn't wait to play it, and I couldn't, and nor could a lot of other people, because the servers reached max capacity and locked everybody out. First days, often, in my experience with betas, can be unpredictable. Very rarely have I gone on a anticipated game's beta and just gone, whoop, straight in, no issue. I think I can count on one hand how many times that happened. Battlefield 1, Call of Duty 4... Yeah, that's it. So I'm spoiling things in this video by saying that no, I'm not going to badly hold it against the game that its beta did not go to plan. Yes, it happens, but the whole point of a stress test beta is to stress test your servers. I do think it's kind of that they gave out so many extra codes, not including the VIP people who pre-ordered the Legion of Dawn edition, which I think, yes, that's that's bad. Don't do that. And so it proved, because so many people were unable to play. And this is the sort of thing that gets a game, the classic tagline, the game is dead on arrival. Well, let me tell you that this game is not dead on arrival, not even close. But there are things that we need to discuss. So, let's take a look at what everyone's been saying. First off, yes, the state of the beta is a bit alarming. There are unfathomable amounts of problems with the actual beta itself, not including the server capacity. I myself have been booted out of countless loading screens that just freeze up, lock up. I spent ages on menu screens that go nowhere and force me to restart the game. Over 10 times did I have to hard quit out of the game and go back and reload it in order to progress. Not okay, I'm 100% with you guys on that one. Number two, Destiny clone. Uh, no, not really. If anything, this borrows more of its gameplay elements from the popular free-to-play Warframe. There are a lot of things that it borrows from, the wheel menu select and so on and so forth, I get that. But if this is the sort of genre you're going to make into a game, it's gonna be familiar and it's gonna be similar to other games. It just is. The looting, the strikes slash raids, this is sort of the model of this shared world shooter, adventure game, third person or first person, this is what you will have. It will be similar. Having said that though, I do think it does enough to distinguish itself from the competition. That's not to say it couldn't break the mold further by adding some unwelcome additions, such as microtransactions. Number three, there will inevitably be some dodgy practices in the final game. Yes, I'm with you guys 100% on that. I cannot see any kind of future for Anthem that does not include some of EA's more dodgy practices. It is inevitable. This is what we come to expect from EA. We just have to hope that it doesn't become too much. But that won't be enough to dissuade people who have convinced themselves of number four. Too repetitive and boring. This is a beta slash demo. So yes, what we're able to do will be repetitive. I seem to recall replaying the missions on the Destiny beta years ago to be incredibly repetitive. And it wasn't until they opened up the moon at the very end of the beta that things changed. So I see what you mean, but at the same time, this is a beta. And this isn't a beta from a company that doesn't know how to make content-rich games. This is Bioware. Now, let's just say, just to calm things down, that we're not expecting another Mass Effect Andromeda here. We all know that that was not their best effort. And whatever rumors of what was going on, troubled development, rushed production, everything like that, throw it out the window, this is a new project. And if we just linger on the idea of people not being able to do right by their next game in the world of development, then by all accounts, both of Bethesda's next projects, including Elder Scrolls VI, are already dead on arrival because Fallout 76 was such a disaster. Now you could turn around and say, oh, but that's Bethesda, surely they couldn't screw up Elder Scrolls VI don't be a hypocrite. Let's not forget that some of the work of Bioware in the past has been magnificent. 
So let's just give them the benefit of the doubt and say that they'll have more content in the final game than what's shown in their little beta. Which brings me to the boring part. Boring? Really? I played through the entire content of the beta several times over with two different javelins and I have to say boring? No, no, anything but boring. There's no slow bits, there's no monotonous tones, there's no uninteresting dialogue. It's it's not boring, no. You're lingering on the repetitive and dragging that out into boring, but Anthem is not boring. I'm sorry, no it isn't. It's fast-paced carnage and everything is action, action, action when you're on an expedition. And that's where the gameplay is, the proper gameplay anyway, so that's what should count. Which of course brings us to my variables, where I look at the things brought up by the critics and try and match them with my own personal perspective. So first off, yes, I do agree that the beta is a mess, and I have said that, but it is still a beta. This is not necessarily a recent version of the game. This could be weeks, if not months older a build, and we need to remember that. The people saying, oh, it might need to be pushed back, it might need to be cancelled, it might need to be this or that. Like, just remember, this beta was probably prepared ages ago. I'd be very surprised if the current build, before they go gold, is not three, four, five, six times a different build to what we're playing the beta for. That's just my opinion. Variable number two, yes, the state of play is terrible at the moment and it's very likely that you'll spend a lot of time looking at frozen loading screens but if you get past that loading screen and get into the game it's superb it's fantastic it's the very essence of the sort of game I want to play carnage all around me and so many ways to deal with it that I'm just left to experiment with all kinds of different tactics until I find something that works for me and I'm forced to be extra crafty with certain enemies who my particular javelin might not be so effective against. And I have to work with my teammates to compensate for those inadequacies of myself in the game. The same way I can personally help my teammates as my favorite interceptor javelin by going and dealing with the turrets with my crazy knife wielding. I haven't seen people trolling when their teammates are down. I've just seen camaraderie and effort. Genuine effort because it is going to be a game where you're going to play through these things a lot to try and get better gear because it's it's the way that this genre works. But the gameplay is first rate. I had so much fun. Every time I actually managed to get into a game, I had an absolute blast and couldn't wait to go again. Which of course is when I would reach a frozen loading screen. But I gotta admit, every time I was playing, I was in heaven. Absolute heaven. Which brings us to variable number three. I got more from the dialogue in this little demo alone than I got in the entirety of Destiny 1. I'm serious. I took more emotion from the characters. I liked the characters better. The story was much more engaging. I probably know as much about the story as I did about Destiny during that beta. And that only served to infuriate me and think, well, there must be more in the final game. But this... This makes me go, ooh, I like these characters. I like these scenarios. I like this world that I'm living in. This is really cool. I want to explore this. And the game just keeps throwing characters at you, even though you have no idea who they are or what they're describing half the time, which is fine. Again, it's a beta, and it puts you right in the middle at level 10. And I just can't help myself. I found it so much more engaging, story-wise and character-wise, than the whole of Destiny 1. And that's saying a lot, because I had played the hell out of Destiny 1. I really did. But I got more personal enjoyment of story from this beta than I did that entire game. Think about that. Which brings me to variable number four. I firmly believe that if we can deal with these bugs, if we can get this fixed in time for launch, no guarantees it probably will still have a few problems, it'll be fantastic. Maybe not groundbreaking, maybe not a total change of pace, a breath of fresh air, but I'll tell you one thing. 
every time I was playing it, I absolutely enjoyed the hell out of it. I couldn't wait to see what I was going to unlock next, what kind of weapons I would pick up, what kind of weapons I'd be able to craft. Every time I went in the town, I found somebody else I couldn't talk to because it said, this is locked for this portion of the beta. I'm already so compelled to explore this world, and the gameplay is buttery smooth and exciting and frenetic, and you're constantly moving, constantly planning, it's just chaos. And as someone who played as the Hunter primarily in all of his time playing Destiny 1 and 2, I love my knife-wielding third-person gameplay. I truly do. Which is why the Interceptor Javelin was custom-made for me, even though it clearly takes from the Hunter class in Destiny. But the frenetic pace that this game brings has me excited. And I've gone from being... Oh yeah, Anthem, well, I've been invited to the VIP beta, I suppose I should give it a shot, to being, when is it coming out? I want to play more, I want to see more, I want this game pre-order, pre-order. And for me, that's a big deal, because I don't like to pre-order games, especially EA games, because I do not have a lot of faith in them anymore. But Bioware do have some excellent storytelling track records. This cannot be denied, and I've already glimpsed that in this beta. I've already been introduced to characters that mean more to me than my entire time playing Destiny, and that to me tells me that I'm playing a game that is made by people who know how to tell a more engaging story. And I get the feeling that by the end of the game, I will have had a much more fulfilling story-driven, at least, experience. And throwing in the fact that it's in third person, my favorite type of shooter, uh, that just sweetens the pot for me. So you've got the potential looting addiction and strike replay and raid replay of Destiny, but with a more engaging story, with a better uh, field of view, and with better graphics and a more interesting world, you have my attention. And you have my money. I'm fully backing Anthem. I can't wait to play more. I love this. I mean, I can't say 100% that I know I'm going to love the game as a whole. But what I've seen has me hooked. I keep thinking, i got to play one more before it ends. I've got to play more. I've got to play more before it ends. And even though I've ages ago reached maximum level in this demo slash beta, that tells me something. That tells me that the gameplay is tight. And I'm not even really thinking about, well, what am I going to loot? I just want to go in there and kill things. Because it's such fluid, responsive, and addicting gameplay. It's got me hooked. And it's only a beta. I didn't even feel that way about the Destiny beta. And I poured a lot of time. As I said, I poured hundreds of hours into that game. So, yeah. My interest is peaked. I've gone from being... Mm, it might be good to, oh yes, no, we're playing this. I think if I had to rate this beta on everything, including where its shortcomings are in terms of how it performed, yeah, it would only be a rare. But if it had performed better, more stable, and it had allowed everybody to play from the first day, we'd be looking at an ascended. I'm that in love with the gameplay. I'm hooked. I can't wait to play more. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. What did you guys think of the beta? Have you played it yet? Are you playing next weekend? Are you just skipping the beta and going straight for the day one release? Are you skipping the game altogether? Am I nuts for saying this game is good? How dare I? Well, let me know in the comments below. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you liked it, tear that like button limb from limb. If you want to be among the first to be notified of new content on the channel, go ahead and slam that subscribe button and ring the bell. And I will see you guys next time.